Hello and welcome everybody to another series of our webinars on the quantum technology and how to use this in the best way. So I hope you had a great day. And uh, the title of our actual webinar is why quantum technology matters in the mobile phone security. So quite on top of everybody's mind as we use our mobile phone regularly. My name is Axel Furry. I have the honor to lead the quantum safe business in IDQ the leader in the quantum randomness and in the quantum key distribution. So today with me, the, uh, Thomas Tom Stengel, the head of the mobile chip business in our, in our company, and Bruno Hüttner, the director for the Strategic Quantum Initiative. So thanks. Um, quick reminder in terms of questions, you have always the chance to ask questions in the chat area. Or on the end, we will also handle a uh, poll on the end to get your feedback and get some interaction into this webinar. And now I'm looking for a great presentation handled by Tom. Tom, it's up to you. Okay, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you joining us today <clears throat> to go through the mobile phone uh, implementation of our quantum technology. And so the, the first thing I want to start with is this is the quantum decade. It's not science fiction and it's not the future. It's begun this decade right now from the year 2020 to 2030 is the quantum decade. And it's already started. Uh, earlier this year, Samsung released the Galaxy A quantum phone, which has, as you can see in the Samsung um, marketing literature, they even put secured by Swiss quantum. ID Quantique is a, a Swiss company. And we are now seeing quantum technology in the hands of a, of a consumer. So quantum technology has been used in the world for about 19 years in various products and data centers and in government agencies and whatnot. But in terms of in a consumer's hand, that began May of this year. And quantum's not the only one. It's spreading into many places. In this case, uh, Binsmart released their Airs phone as well. And you can see right from their website, they're also calling out the Qantas QRNG. Uh, Qantas is the trademark name for ID Quantique's QRNG product, uh, family of products. And uh, we're rather proud of, of having our quantum technology transition this year from, uh, from the very useful uh, 18 years of applications into the end user being able to hold it in their hand and, and derive value. And you know, you, you'll see uh, press releases and you'll see articles online, uh, even broadcast news occasionally, uh, lots of stuff and growing on quantum technology. And maybe more of it's on quantum computing than any other one thing. And you know, there's a reason for that. It's definitely more uh, you know, attractive to hear about. And especially when people like Google and IBM are leading in that direction. But there's a lot of other aspects of quantum technology, things like quantum sensing, which is a division of ID Quantique does that as well, and quantum security. Today, I'm only gonna be talking about things that are involved with quantum security. You know, ID Quantique has been doing this for 19 years. Our first product in the year 2001 was the world's first quantum random number generator. Of course, it was a lot bigger back then. See in the upper left-hand corner, it was about a half a meter wide, you know, about 20 inches wide. And uh, through many years of in creating new quantum technologies or new products based on quantum technologies, as well as shrinking existing ones, you'll see in my product line, quantum random number generator, it was eventually shrunk to a board level and then eventually shrunk to a USB level. And then within the last year, in the upper right-hand corner, shrunk to a family of QRNG chips, the smallest of which is 2.5 millimeters square, less than a millimeter thick, and in cell phones. It's also an Internet of Things devices and things like that. That, that's, that kind of path of, of improvement in quantum technology, in this case, not for quantum computing, but for quantum security, is taken something that Adequantique has been doing for 19 years and put it into your home in so many different places. These are all markets today that are already using one way or another QRNG solution. Uh, many of them for the past 18 years have been based on the physically larger solutions that we presented. It's only this year that we are in the mobile phones that I'm gonna talk about for the rest of my slides today. 
So quantum random number generation, and it, it makes phone security more secure. So what does that mean? So first let's talk about how it can be used within the phone. Th this is an actual picture of the Galaxy, the, quant the Samsung Galaxy A quantum phone. And one of the first decisions that a uh, company designing a product, in this case, a phone has to make is, are they gonna use quantum enhanced security for everything on that device or on application by application? And we certainly have some customers at ID Quantique who are using the quantum enhanced security for everything that the device does. Like if somebody was to do that with a phone, then every phone call and every text message and every app would automatically be quantum enhanced security. In the case of the first release that came earlier this year, they picked three services to apply the quantum enhanced security. That, that was a marketing decision more than an engineering decision. There's no substantial difference between implementing this for everything on the phone versus individual services. So for the pay services, you have know, like banking services or credit card services, which I'll show you a little more about in a moment. Or for cryptocurrency, the quantum wallet. You know, we all hear about crypto wallet or cryptocurrency or digital wallet. Um, well, quantum wallet is quantum enhanced security for the cryptocurrency. And for identification services, the first one done was using quantum enhanced security for two-factor authentication. Subsequently added things like quantum one-time passwords. Um, there's now, I believe, 27 different applications using the quantum enhanced security. I'd have to double check most recent numbers. The point here is for this first release, they decided to go use the quantum enhanced security application by application. So this is what a banking application looks like for anyone. Pretty, pretty standard, you have your cell phone, the different things you wanna do on the phone, goes through the cloud to a bank of servers at your bank who have digital uh, bank accounts for you. And the first thing is quantum enhanced security makes that more secure. You are less likely to have a hack, hacker steal your bank account, steal your money. So that's pretty straightforward. It works with the existing security in the phone. As I show you later slides in the implementation phase, we're not changing anything in the phone. That the, the first phone that came out was using a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor with the, its embedded encryption. We didn't change that encryption algorithm at all. It was the same. The only thing we changed was by using the quantum random number generator, we made it a more trusted key. We made a key that can't be broken. So let's talk about what that looks like in a specific application which is the first bank to offer a bank account that was quantum secure. It's actually DGB Daewoo Bank in Korea. And they decided in order to grow their market share and be able to grow their revenues, that they wanted to go to their customers and offer a quantum secured bank account. And that bank account is something you go and you open it up and you get a phone, one of the Samsung Galaxy A quantum phones, or unless you already have one, there's quite a few people who already bought one. And from that point forward, those same transactions you were doing before, using the same servers at the bank on the right-hand side, going through the same cloud from a phone that's running the same, it says the phone is the same in all ways, except for it also now has the IDQ QRG chip inside of it. And you now have quantum enhanced security of your banking transfers. And this is a case where someone was using the application to grow market share and, and some also uh, revenue, month to month revenue. Here's another example of using uh, an enhanced phone for better security. So we all send text messages and it seems like a day can't go by without some movie star or some government employee or some uh, regular persons uh, text messaging getting hacked and it leading to some issue, some problem, or just some embarrassment. It's your private information. No one has a right to see it. So here's an app developer. It's a, it's a soon to be released uh, publicly app developer working with IDQ. And in this case, um, unlike the other phones I showed you, the other phones I showed you are using the encryption that's already in the phone and enhancing it with our QR and G chip. In this case, uh, this app developer is wrote an app which makes an enhanced encryption engine 
that runs on the phone and is also using our QRNG to further enhance that communication. So when you are using this kind of a, uh, of a product, you can, uh, they, you know, the color coding is if it's gray, you're using it regular text messaging. And if it's blue, you're using the PQC, the post quantum cryptographic algorithm that they are adding to the cell phone's algorithm. And if it's red, you're using the ID quantique key generated from the QRNG chip uh, random number, and you're using the post PQC algorithm for your highest level of security. This is an example again of somebody who is rolling out a product with an expectation of uh, downloading it, uh, selling the app for revenue. And the service here is to provide uh, unhackable text messaging. So to summarize how people are deriving revenue from the, the mobile phone, there's a couple of things. And first and fundamentally, the QRNG makes the phone security more secure. It first and foremost works with a security that is inside there already. I'll show you how that works in a few minutes. And after it makes the phone security more secure, it's really up to the marketing people in your company to decide how they're gonna leverage that for revenue. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. One is, you know, quantum technology is differentiation. And, and just that the basic point of view of buying a phone or buying an internet things device or buying any product, um, differentiation leads to higher margin. And that's, and that's already been proven. There's some great statistics out there on security and improving security and how that improvement of security leads to higher market share and uh, higher uh, margins for the hardware. And we're already seeing that ID Quantique's customers are charging higher margins on first release, um, except for some of them who are going for higher market share at the same price. And then of course, uh, you know, services revenue, the ability to, to leverage this into services and generate either one-time revenue to sell an app or monthly revenue based on that service there are different ways to leverage that. So that's a little bit on the use cases. And before I go into exactly how it works, I just want to remind all of you that at, uh, at any time during this presentation on the use case or on how it works that's coming up, you can load in some questions and we'll get to those in a few minutes when we're at the end of the presentation. And we will answer those now. And if there's any we can't answer immediately, we'll follow up in writing later. All right, so what is the quantum that's in QRNG? So first, you know, encryption algorithms, we, we all hear the term encryption and crypto and various ways of saying it. It's a mathematical lock. It's a lot like the lock on the front door of your house. You have a lock on your house so, to protect what's inside the house. So same thing in the digital world. If you have a data file that you want to be encrypted, it's a mathematical lock. Or if you have an instant message or, or a communication channel, cell phone call that you want to be encrypted, it's a mathematical lock in order to protect it so that somebody else can't get into and derive value from, from that digital thing. And just like the front door on your house has a lock that's open with a key, we have a mathematical key that opens up that digital lock in the cell phone space. And that mathematical key is very important because you know, if somebody steals your key, they can get into your house for, for the mathematical lock. But equally important, what if somebody can pick the lock? What if somebody can, can pretend to be the key with a, a pick set and open the lock and get in your house? So we have the same challenge in the digital space. You don't want someone to mathematically recreate your key. You don't want somebody to mathematically pick the lock. So, Having the most secure key is the critical aspect of encrypting something. And we wanna talk about that a little bit. How do you make a key? So, so that in order to make the most secure key, it starts by making it in an unpredictable way. So the foundation to all encryption is having random numbers, actual random numbers, true random numbers, pure random numbers are the foundation because with a, with a random number that is a true random number, you make a strong key. And when you make a strong key, that makes for a secure crypto system. And so it's it's critical here that quantum randomness makes the best key. And that provides the highest level of trust. I wanna show you how quantum randomness makes the best key. 
So where does quantum random number generators come from? Well, quantum physics describes the microscopic world. And a lot of that was created originally by Niels Bohr, uh, Schrodinger, Heisenberg, names that you may have heard. And um, the output of a lot of their work was that light was intrinsically random. In fact, uh, uh, one of the German quantum physicists, Max Born, actually was writing to Einstein that, that randomness and uncertainty was the heart of quantum physics, to which Albert Einstein famously replied, God does not play dice. Well, I guess that's famous if you're into quantum physics uh, and do it like we do. But um, you know, it's why that so many companies that do quantum physics will put a set of dice on their website or on their slides, like we do at ID Quantique, because that was famously proved wrong. Einstein was wrong. It was proved that at the heart of quantum physics, uh, you know, light is intrinsically random, and and that's what we are doing here. We are gathering the intrinsic randomness from the light source. I'm going to show you how that works in a second, but how, was, how are you doing it today? You, you may not realize it, but today your encryption engine is already using a random number generator. And probably not the old style PRNGs, those are mostly gone today. Uh, it's probably a TRNG. And, and the classic ways to do that involve either deriving randomness from uh, electromagnetic signal, using a ring oscillator to try to grab electromagnetic signals and, and and from the environment get randomness, or uh, electromechanical vibrations and turning that into random signals, or thermal uh, jitter, if you will, thermal changes at the you know you know thousandth of a millivolt level, you know, and, and reading that as a random uh, number. The problem with that is they're not actually random numbers, are they? Because mankind is created all these things. We've created you know, cars whose motors run and create vibrations that are not random, they're, they're periodic. We've created, you know, vacuum cleaners and anything from refrigerators to our laptops, pardon me, fans and anything from our uh, uh, refrigerators to our laptops, vacuum cleaners. These things are all putting out periodic information. It's not random. Even the power that comes into your house is either, depending upon where you are in the world, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So for lack of a better way to put it, the, the so-called randomness of nature is polluted by mankind with periodic signals. And it's not the best way to find randomness in the world. Whereas the light, which is intrinsically random and is not polluted by, by random signals, we are uh, very specifically having reading a light source. And let me show you what that looks like. So it's actually more than one light source and more than one sensor. And this is at the semiconductor level. So these are microscopically small light sources, multiple ones creating light, and many microscopically small sensors. The actual distance the light uh, travels is minuscule. It's created on a semiconductor within our chip. It's tr travels a minuscule amount of distance, it's immediately collected, but that doesn't matter. The, the, the power density, the, the photon, the number of photons and what those photons are doing is, is true randomness. And that's what we are collecting for the quantum entropy output. We actually, take some effort to filter out and make sure that the environmental noises that are that uh, other solutions and older fashion solutions are using do not get in. And we wanna give you only the quantum entropy in our output. Now that's our fundamental product and our main product. We do have a family of products. And in some cases we have, we add in the hash-based DRBG post-processing. And that, uh, that gives you a lot of self-test and health check. And there's a lot of, goodness there. It does cost um, power consumption and it does cost physical cost of money to implement. So there is a trade-off there. If you don't need it, most people don't use it because they want to save the power and the money. But if you do need it, it is uh, it's a, it provides a great deal of extra information uh, and uh, it does, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the random numbers. So how do you implement that? It's pretty straightforward. Any processor in a cell phone, we're talking about mobile phones today, and they all look pretty much the same, whether it's uh, a very low-end phone, a medium phone, or the most advanced high-end super feature phone, they all have a CPU. And it may have different amount of processing power cycles available if it's on a low-end or medium or high-end, but they all look essentially the same, different amount of memory, but they all have memory, certain amount of general purpose IO, certain kind of specific IOs like I squared C buses or SPI buses, some of them on the high end will have you know, built-in USBs or 
maybe even PCI Express and on the low end, maybe only uh, USB. That's the I.O. may change and the amount of memory change and the amount of CPU processing cycles may change, but they all look the same. In fact, even for other markets like automotive, computing, you know, laptops and servers, Internet of Things devices, whether it's a, a really low end processor for a, 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 a very inexpensive Internet of Things sensor, all the way up to a really large server running a huge processor, they're all von Neumann architecture processors. The architecture is the same. The, the amount of memory and processing cycles and, and I.O. changes. And they all have these encryption engines. And what they do is, if you decide you have a file you want to encrypt, your CPU will send a message to the encryption engine and say, encrypt this file. And that encryption engine, as we talked about earlier, will, will perform this encryption function, which is a mathematical lock. We're locking up mathematically that file. And the key, in order to create the key for that lock, we're going to reach and grab a random number out of the random number generator in order to create the key for that lock. And where I mean Quantique comes in is our device solders down on the board right next to that processor. Doesn't matter whether it's an Internet of Things, low-end sensor, a mobile phone, or a big CPU, laptops, whatever. We solder down on the board right next to it. We connect through either the I squared C or the SPI bus. We pick those buses because we've yet to find a processor that didn't have one available of those two. Now the same function happens. You want a file to be encrypted or you want a communications channel to be encrypted. And the CPU goes to the encryption engine and it says encrypt this file or this channel. And the encryption engine performs that function, the mathematical lock. Only now, when it's creating the key for that mathematical lock, it grabs the random number generate, generated by the ID quant teacher. It's that simple. From a software point of view, very simple. This is just a standard software stack. It looks pretty much the same, whether it's a mobile phone, you know, a, a, a laptop or a server. Um, there's always some little differences, but if you look at the lower right-hand side, we provide you with the QRG chip drivers. And your devices in Linux for all these different kinds of things, including mobile phones, you'll have an API stack. With an API stack at the application layer interface, and this is where it's different for a mobile phone than it is for, say, a server. In mobile phone, it'll be Android-based application layers. Now, going back to what I showed you for the use cases earlier, it's a marketing decision at your company on whether you want to make it so that everything gets quantum enhanced security, or if it's done application by application, or even as one of our app developers I showed you did it, they made it that within their application, you can turn on or turn off whether you want to use quantum enhanced keys. You know, so that, that's just a marketing decision. That's a trivial difference of uh, implementation for the engineers. And, you know, we have a family of, of quantum random number generators. These are just uh, the three latest chips. And I'm showing you the, the small, medium, and the large, if you will. This would service anything from one of these chips would service servers in a data center, all the way to one of these chips would service an Internet of Things sensor or a mobile phone. And, and any design in between. The function of these devices is the same. The, the main difference, there's a, some subtle differences in I.O., but the main difference is the quantity of keys that can be generated. You know, if you're in an Internet of Things device or a, or a cell phone, it's one person, so you are not generating a huge number of keys all the time. Whereas if you're at a server in a data center, you may be processing thousands of files a second, thousands of channels a second, or thousands of files a millisecond. So you need a lot more key generation, you need a lot more random numbers. That's really the only difference, main difference. There's some other subtle differences. The best part is it's available today. It's not science fiction. It's not five years from now or three years from now or one year from now. It's already in your rearview mirror. There's already people doing it and deploying it and generating revenue based on quantum enhanced security. You know, this, this opens up a world of differentiation and value-added services. And now it's up to your imagination on driving revenue with your product using the chip. It's actually a picture of uh, where we are in uh, Geneva. It's in the Swiss Alps. It's not actually our facility. Um, that's our team got together. And uh, I just want to say that, uh, you know, the quantum technology is here. It's now, and you can get, get in touch with us anytime. You know, we are a high quality engineering facility. We've already been delivering products for 19 years. So we have 
uh, a lot of experience in fo focusing on making things operationally easy for you to use and always generating, generating the most trusted key. So I want to thank you very much. I'm going to turn it back over to Axel to go through any questions that may have been loaded. Thank you, Tom, very much. Very interesting and obviously on the spot. Um, as we are in the quantum decade, we get everyday news on the progress on the quantum computing side and so the impact on our technology as well, right? So it gets mandatory and we are quite positive that we can help at least on the mobile phone side with our chip. So we got a couple of questions. Um, um, let me start with the first one. Uh, one second. Hello, Bruno. So that's Bruno, as I have announced at the beginning. Thanks for joining as well. Um, what are our plans in terms of uh, using this chip also outside of the mobile phone? You mentioned IoT and other use cases. Do you yeah. see already there's a concrete something going on? Uh, is this, uh, I think we, are, we know we have areas where maybe it's even more crucial than in mobile phone in the uh, automotive space. Do you see something already concrete on the horizon, Tom? Or Absolutely. In, in fact, let me tell you that uh, next week we'll be doing another webinar showing some of the other ones like video surveillance. We already have an announced partnership. You'll find it on our website with a company that does both video surveillance and video conferencing and has now upgraded it to quantum enhanced security. Uh, we have different partners. We have partner uh, in, in, in drones. Um, we have not uh, publicly announced yet. We're getting closer to announcing our partnership in the automotive space. Um, but yeah, we, we are deeply proud of having uh, already accomplished the mobile phone and having it out there. Uh, but we are breaking out into many other markets this year already, and certainly many more next year. Okay, thank you. Can you give an indication in which price dimension we are talking and if you want to use this chip in the different areas? Is this, a, is this, a, is this possible for you? <laughs> so actually, you know, semiconductor market is pretty straightforward. It's all volume based. You know, if somebody calls me and they want 10 million of something, it's a totally different price for the same chip than if they want 10 of something. Um, but certainly, I guess my real answer would be, we are in a cell phone. And, you know, cell phone is a very uh, price challenged market. You, you can't even set foot inside of a cell phone if you are not already extremely low price. So I'll, uh, without, uh, you know, you can contact us and we will work with you on pricing for your application. But the fact that we're in a cell phone should say a lot about how low our pricing must be. Okay, thank you. There's a more technical question on key rates, Bruno. What do you think about key rates in relate to the chip? And what is our, is there some guidance we can give to the audience at least high level? Well, I mean, it really depends again, I think as Tom mentioned uh, on the application, in a cell phone, you don't need so many keys because you have basically a few applications running together. It's very, very different when we talk about putting a QR engine servers, and that's why we have all this range of products, as Tom mentioned. Some go from a few kilobit per sec, hundreds of kilobit per second to several megabits and up to 50 megabit per second. So really, I think we now have a wide range of products. And if you look at the size of the chips, they are so small that actually you can put on so cheap. Actually, you can also uh, put several of them and get to uh, hundreds of megabits or even gigabits uh, relatively easily. So it's really up to you to decide how many, how much randomness you need and uh, the rate, and uh, we can probably find something for you. Okay, thank you. There's another a little more technical question. I think it's also for you, Bruno. It's about uh, post quantum algorithm, right? So is there what is what is the guidance from us in this direction, especially maybe also with the link to, to the chip as we have seen right now, because it's in everybody's mind, maybe mathematics will cover everything or um, if so, what is the precondition? So maybe you can give us some insights <clears throat> on this. Indeed, this is, this is a topic which uh, Tom has not uh, gone through in detail. Of course, he cannot go through everything. Um, this is about the quantum computer. And as you, most of you already probably know, um, there is people are designing quantum computers and these quantum computers will be with us in the next five to 10 years and they will break most of existing cryptography. 
So we need to find new solutions. And of course, getting a better key is already something, but it's not enough because if you have a good key on a bad algorithm, which will, which will be broken by the quantum computer, uh, the whole system is broken. As you know, it's always when you got a chain, uh, the weakest link is always uh, the, basically the, the chain strength is given by the weakest link. And that's why we need to, to go further than just giving better keys, but also maybe uh, finding better algorithm. And as uh, Tom mentioned, we did that already uh, on the mobile phone with uh, a partner who is implementing already this so-called post-quantum algorithm, which will be resilient to the quantum computer. So by using uh, uh, this new application, which Tom mentioned, you have basically a better key generation with our uh, random QRNG and also better algorithms uh, to make sure that your encryption will uh, survive even after there is a quantum computer. Um, not with mobile phone, but with uh, larger links, and uh, we need optical links to do that. We also provide a quantum key distribution, which is another answer to the quantum computer. But if you start me on the QKD, I think we will be here until uh, dinner time or whatever time it is with you. So maybe I stop here. Yeah, we have also other webinars which are covering this coming quite well and for sure there will be a future series. Maybe there's one final question uh, before we go to the to the poll. Uh, is there a link to uh, from QRNG in the future to QKD? So that's a, the question which I will take because I think that's also to give a perspective because as we are talking about quantum randomness, Tom mentioned already it's not science fiction, it's there and um, even we see already some a series in TV uh, on quantum computer, it shows clearly that something which gets concrete, right? It's quite funny to see a technology which will change everything what we know, because if you have this processing power to translate this in a common language, um, you will see a lot of things will be crystal clear. For example, random number generation in a classical way, uh, algorithm which they are not good but also all data-driven applications will go to a totally different level we can't imagine at the moment. So that's for sure in front of us. And so also for us, I think we, for sure, we have to think how we make the world safe in a quantum environment. And QNG is only the first step. QKD is for sure answer to a lot of links where we have line of sight. More webinars available on this, but for sure we will connect this two to a service offering in the future, right? So that's something which we have to do as industry uh, that we combine both and bring a no, totally new level of security and authentication into the game. It's still some way to go, but clearly that's the direction we go for. So we will combine a chip with other features and functions which maybe come from other sides to come to a new level of security we all need. So that's uh, there is more to come, but in, most important, we always say, it's now. Well, it's, you have to act. It's something we you have to consider. Tom mentioned quite often marketing, and yes, it's right. A product with quantum in the name sells better than a, a phone without this. Or even interesting enough, we had this on the TV screen. You can maybe remember Quantum Dot was there, and they sell more and have achieved a higher price. But in the end, it's about really a new level of security and preparing for this because it will reach maybe much earlier we all expect, and then uh, you have to act, uh, maybe you're too late to act, and that's the reason why we handle this webinar. So now, Catherine, I come to the poll. Will you open the poll for the first question? Oh, technology, yeah, yeah, here you go. So please uh, use the time to share your thoughts um, about encryption projects. And uh, I think we, so Catherine, you have to finish because you can see uh, uh, how many have already responded. I think. Mm -hmm. So we have 58% voters. Okay. Is there a trend? Mm -hmm. Is this more? Yes, in six months, 12 months? No, it's it's know. quite shared between six months and no. Um, so it feels that quite a few, I'd say a quarter, uh, yes, in the coming six months, 15% yes in the coming 12 months. But at this stage, many do not know. 
Okay, so, so I hope this, thank you, Catherine. Um, maybe you open the second one and I will comment mm -hmm. on this result. So the first for the uh, for all which have already encryption projects in front, I hope you get an idea on a topic which maybe was not on the radar because randomness typically is not on everybody's mind, uh, especially as the human brain is not capable to to see patterns as uh, AI software or in the future um, quantum computer. So that's normal and randomness can help. It is the first step clearly uh, to prepare. For all others, I hope we motivated them to uh, to think about encryption project or think about in entering a better randomness in their product, especially for sure in this case mobile phones, but for sure also in other phones. And we are quite optimistic in terms of requests we received of these different industries. So we have the result of the second one. So, yeah. so I hope there's a positive reaction. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, so ni yeah, ninety five percent yes, and it's even going up. Yeah. That's good. Going up, going up 90, 97%. Okay, thank you, Catherine. I think we're also for setting this up. Um, maybe a final, final quote from my side at first. Thanks for the positive feedback. It encouraged us to produce more of this. Please reach out to us if you have further questions. We will also um, post this webinar online so you have the chance to have a look again. But we are happy to receive uh, questions and for sure interest as well uh, on our products and in this case, especially on the chip. So watch out on our website or on LinkedIn. We uh, typically post uh, these webinars and there are a couple of other interesting topics coming in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Bruno. Thanks, Catherine, for setting up. Have a great day. Stay safe and stay secure and prepare the security for the future. Thank you very much.